John Samuel Ross win at the BFF BFC Awards. So the British Fans, British Fashion British Fashion Council Awards. Is it council? Yeah, British Fashion Council Awards um, were the other day. Star studded event. It looked very nice, very glamorous. All the big stars came out. Blah 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 blah. But who cares about that? The biggest winners um on the night, as per from the from a streetwear perspective, were Virgil and Samuel Ross. And it's a kind of great little um nook again in the cultural timeline or the influence timeline um of streetwear overall to see these two people on on either ends of the kind of journey you know of this kind of creative journey that they're on being represented and being honored in this occasion now sometimes you know i can preface it by saying that the bfc could be like the oscars it could be like a lot of award shows where there's kind of you know there's a lot of payola involved there if you're represented by a certain group um such as virgin and the, the new guards group and whatever company it was that invested in um sam ross's a cold war some people could argue that maybe some of those companies kind of play a role behind the scenes to making sure your client is positioned in these great places you know it's no coincidence that these two companies two two people who are kind of um, backed by two very big companies have now been suddenly kind of thrusted in the limelight are getting given positions at louis vuitton also getting awarded uh nominated for these big awards it could be like a positioning thing overall whatever your kind of conspiracy theory is put it to one side i think just looking at it objectively i think it's an amazing achievement for both people i think overall for us as a community it really goes to show just how far um the scene has progressed over the years where we're quint we're essentially getting a kind of streetwear upstart in a cold war that's kind of now elevated itself to the realms of high fashion and we're getting virgil who started that as creative director of kanye west now being honored you know as one of the kind of four four um the kind of leaders in the kind of urban lux category the, the title of the title of his win or the the category that he was involved in is a bit cringy don't get me wrong but i think in general to kind of the best to best describe that look that's happening at the moment where you know um people are more attuned to kind of you know dressing in a kind of streetwear oriented way i think that's probably the best way to kind of encapsulate it to kind of have somebody um finally kind of say that yeah virgil is the leader of that pack and to kind of say you know um simon ross is kind of leading the kind of new guard up um is kind of a champion for the kind of new guard is a great great representation of raw um videos of the war ceremony are here i'm gonna play them quickly for you guys to hear but again i just think it's fucking gnarly i think it's so cool to have like you know virgil who mentored samuel in the very beginning he kind of helped out with a lot of the graphics in the early days uh, i think specifically with who Bayer stuff i heard him mention a few interviews and some of white's things and then for him to suddenly kind of like pull away from that at a time when virgil's because again you have to you have to remember i think samuel ross stopped being virgil's assistant or stopped working for virgil just when virgil was starting to pick up steam as well so he was suddenly kind of crossing over into mainstream and simon decided to kind of start his own brand which kind of took a lot of gumption a lot of balls right um and then of course during that time as well virgil's entering fashion during a time when people are kind of you know uh, pontificating about you know um the importance of fashion designers going to fashion school and blah, blah 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 and here comes this guy who has no formal training suddenly coming up up the ranks uh debuting on paris fashion week um then you know a few years later he's being appointed the uh creative director of louis vuitton's men's and now you know recently got announced that he's um gonna lead the um, the sustainable kind of um end of evian water you know so many hats he's wearing at the same time it's so it's so cool to see how they've kind of progressed over like over that period of time and um yeah so this the here's some footage of the award ceremony being handed out i'm quickly gonna play here for you guys to to hear and listen to get up on here on the screen but yeah i think it's just cool to see i think again for the new generation coming up my idols were like hiroshi fujiwara aaron bondaroff um who are kind of doing and probably james jebby in the beginning who are kind of doing cool stuff um uh michael copperman and i give me five i always kind of wanted to be involved right i never just wanted to be the consumer i always kind of saw these guys as like okay they're geniuses what they're doing is incredible but i i also have knowledge i also have practical skills i can do what they do but the thing that separates us of course is that they have they have the they they trust their ability enough to back themselves right they invest themselves they put their money where their mouth is and they shit product they just pontificate about things they didn't just share psd files they actually went out there and made shit happen and um by hook and crook by just being persistent and consistent putting out good work they were kind of you know they were kind of rewarded with companies with um, agencies 
with collaborations, with hiring jobs, whatever it may be. So I think in general, it's good to see for um, the new generation to see that hard work does pay off, you know, just putting your head down and working uh, prodigiously. I don't think anyone can kind of say um, Samuel Ross or Virgil Abloh are overnight sensations. We've kind of seen them learn in real, in real time. I think that's one thing that we have to kind of appreciate from the whole school of Kanye West. That's something that he has been very um, forthright in saying along the, along the journey that he's kind of taken, that he's kind of learning in public. And I think that's something that was kind of a little bit it, it seemed like it was something that was kind of a um some something a lot of people didn't really want to do in the early years i think of social media it wasn't everyone kind of wanted to present the final the, the final image everyone wanted to present, everyone wanted to present an image that they were kind of the final product that they were kind of the refined image that they kind of had figured it all out no one wanted to show the kind of you know the the dirt the sort of like the grafting in the beginning right and then once you kind of further then a couple of years later when that whole idea that Gary Vaynerchuk kind of perpetuated on social media especially when he kept the vlogging of documenting instead of um of d d documenting in your journey um that's how you make content but i remember there was a period of time when vloggers were really finding it hard to um vlog interesting content because you know they're just doing their everyday life right they weren't doing anything called interesting they weren't going to fancy resorts or attending cool trade shows they're just living their life and and kind of, kind of go with a range of kind of shit that convo and say no just document and that is content enough and i think in the creative sphere that's kind of happened a lot now you've seen people kind of throwing up sketches throwing up kind of line sheets that they're kind of working on but again i think it's kind of veered too much on the idea of pontification of just like uh you know enumerating about things that you want to do without actually sh without actually showing the physical product and actually shipping it and having it available for sale and i think these two um people are kind of um, exponents of the idea of that you should try and ship as much as you can put your, your stuff out there speak from a point of authority and over time hopefully people will respect um, your opinion and want to hire you for something so anyway here's the videos here I'm gonna show I'm gonna click the first one and then you guys can hear them accepting their award at the ceremony where is it not that one where would I move it I keep moving stuff around anyway here we go there you go. Time now for the award for Urban Lux. To do the honours, two gold medal winning athletes, Katarina Johnson Thompson and Dina Asher Smith. Whoops. Time now for the award for Urban Lux. To do the honours, two gold medal winning athletes, Katarina Johnson Thompson and Dina Asher Smith. And the winner of the Fashion Award for Urban Lux 2018 is Off-White. Yeah, it's really great. And I like that Virgil wore a hoodie as well and his uh, Louis Vuitton sort of like um, gun holster thing as well. That's, that's pretty cool. It's a black tie event. Uh, for the BFC awards, and he turns up in some jeans, Air Force Ones, his hoodie, and uh, and a little gun holster. Again, no nothing he does is by chance. It's always there's always sort of like um, meta narratives or um, point of views that he's trying to propagate out there. So you know the idea that he's sort of like representing streetwear um, at this kind of like black tie event, wearing the quintessential streetwear items, the jeans, the trainers, the hoodie is a sort of like nod to kind of where he's come from and also kind of a, again a little nod to us fans out there and people that kind of want to do the same thing that he's doing and saying look you can do this too i am just like you i also wear a hoodie trainers and a pair of jeans we're all in this together um thank you to all those involved i, I still think it's an astonishing achievement to have me and the class of designers that were nominated oh i love also um quickly i think he's i've just seen it now um you know the sort of like um you know the strap that's on, on the louis vuitton bags uh the kind of link that he's kind of like uh made sort of like really popular now especially that the link i was attached to the iridescent bag that i saw a few times i think he's now i'm not sure if he's kind of edit if not sure if something is going to be available in the next collection but he sort of like chain made it into um uh a wallet chain so it attaches onto his jean which looks fucking awesome hopefully that comes out very soon i want to give a special thanks to davide and andrea the first two that believed in me in this particular vision uh and with that said let's have a great evening take care thanks so that's pretty good to see that happen um so yeah, he picked up his award and then I think next I'm going to show you uh, Samuel Ross picking up his award too. 
for the I think the best is it up and coming fashion designer or something along those lines? Let me just try and get up and see what that was. Mm -hmm. Bada bing, bada boom. Where is it? Okay. The next awards are for British emerging talent. I said emerging talent actually. Emerging. To present it, the ingenious Virgil Abloh and the immaculate Winnie Harlow. We're delighted to be here to celebrate the award for the emerging talent British-based menswear designers. The British emerging talent menswear of 2018 is Samuel Ross for a cold wall. Simon's got that Isimiyaki suit on. Very, very nice. It's very popular now, though, isn't it? Loads of kids are wearing that Isimiyaki um, sort of ripple texture suit. Firstly, thank you for the support of, uh, you know, my mentor Virgil for, you know, seeing my talent early on and of course the, the British Fashion Council. Thank you for the industry support and this is uh, the beginning of a long journey and I'm just really grateful to be here and part of this amazing industry that supports young talent. Thank you. So again, um, super cool to see. I think overall, um, I think again, I think it's so cool for the younger generation to see that kind of thing happening in real time. I think even when I was coming up in the scene, I said before, um, having idolizing people like Aaron Bondroff and Heron Preston and James Jebu and Michael Copperman, like give me five. Um, they were sort of like made men anyway, before I knew, knew who they were. They all kind of were on their way up. <laughs> Um, have um, so it can be said. So like um, I didn't necessarily see to get see their origin stories like firsthand. I've read about it of in magazine interviews and stuff, but um, I think for this generation just to actually see, you know, you remember the time when you did see um Sammy Ross like hanging around with Virgil and being one of their kind of assistants and then going off and starting his own thing. You do remember seeing like Virgil uh starting up the Pyrex brand first, the Pyrex Vision brand, and having that video with all the ASAP mob where he's the the guy spray painting the back of the wall with the twenty three in the back of it, like you saw you saw the kind of origin story from the beginning to the end or from the beginning to the kind of present day so i think that's really cool for the kids to see nowadays that hard work does really pay off and these aren't again i think it's good to see also that the biggest people in the industry aren't overnight successes i think it's good to have them in general to kind of have a, a few of night successes sprinkled in there one um uh, bit by bit but i think it's also good to actually see people that have actually been working very hard very diligently in the industry without having any kind of accolades without having any sort of hype behind their name and then you know over time slowly but surely their work kind of like propagates and they kind of build it kind of gets better and better it reaches a bigger audience and you know all the fruits of their talents are come towards them so i think that's good to see for people in general because you know people have always got excuses oh i can't do it because x y and z but it's like look if if he, if he or she can do it and they look exactly like you they're from exactly the same sort of socioeconomic background as you are then you have literally no excuse <laughs> 